Have you heard of this new hormone called CCN3 that can reverse osteoporosis? Well, there is definitely some evidence out there saying that this thing called CCN3 uh, it exists and that it could be the future of the treatment for osteoporosis. And I've seen so many videos on this topic. I wanna help clear some of the confusion here. Our community of people with osteoporosis that concerns around bone health is so inquisitive and I absolutely love it. But sometimes we can let our desires to find the knight in shining armor get a little bit ahead of us. So stick with me as I walk through this thing called CCN3, what it is, how it could be helpful, and what the future potentially could look like with a hormone like this. Okay, so what is CCN3? Well, CCN3 actually is an acronym, and it stands for a couple of amino acids. It's a protein, it's a hormone. There's little other acronyms in there like CYR61, CTGF, NOV3. It's a little bit complex. We'll just call it CCN3 for short. It's part of the CCN family of proteins though, and these are involved in various cellular processes, including bone formation, but also other cool things like cell adhesion, proliferation, differentiation. These are all things that happen to the bone forming cells, specifically the osteoblasts. So CCN3 then, very specifically, plays a role in regulating bone health by influencing osteoblasts, and to some extent osteoclasts as well. And it's a totally newly discovered hormone, and that's why there's been so many uh, studies on it, that's why there's been articles on it, because it is exciting. So this whole hormone class is actually kind of new, and we're just learning now in the, the research and in the science what this hormone class does. And CCN3 specifically is a class of hormones that is very specific to bone building, bone formation, and unlike the therapies like bisphosphonates and prolia, these drugs, those drugs focus on bone breakdown, this focuses more on building up. So how does it work? Well, it seems to really stimulate osteoblasts, those cells that build bone, to build more bone. It's kind of like the anabolic drugs, Forteo and Timlos, it may also, though, act to suppress osteoclasts, the cells that break down bone, and that's actually a little bit different than Forteo and Temlos because those drugs, when you're taking the anabolic drugs, will drive bone building up, but it'll actually also drive bone breakdown up to make room for the new building. So we generally see both of the biomarkers go up. This may actually do what we intuitively think we want to do, which is to drive up bone building and maybe even bring down bone breakdown. So there is the potential there to increase bone density, improve bone quality, make bone stronger and more resistant to fracture, right? So this sounds really good. But here's where we are with this. All of the research to date has been done either in a Petri dish or in an animal model, specifically rodents like rats. The animal studies do look amazing. 20 to 30% increase in bone density, especially in the spine and the hip. Now that sounds really cool, right? Because while we see sometimes people improving their bone density 20 to 30%, there's a lot of components to that. And it is, it is the exception, not the average, right? So if you could on average improve bone density 20 to 30%, that would be a therapeutic worth considering. However, remember that research takes time, drugs take time, and we're still in the early stages here. These are literally called preclinical studies. That means that we are looking at this only in animal models, and there's a lot left to figure out. Human trials would be the next big step. The question is, is will we actually even get there? All right, so before I get to the most important part about CCN3, I just want to point out that this is a great example of how we can get lost in the weeds by reading articles, by reading blog posts, by looking at videos on YouTube. We can totally get lost in the things that are not actually going to have an impact on our bone now. And if you're struggling to look for those things that are the most impactful, I have a solution for you. And if you haven't done our masterclass yet, please come visit our masterclass. It's where we talk about the myths. It's where we talk about the most common mistakes. And we offer up some of the biggest low-hanging fruit solutions for bone health. So if you haven't done that, please sign up for that in the description on YouTube and in the show notes in the podcast. All right, so the big question is, can CCN3 become a drug? Could it become the drug of choice? Could it become a supplement? Could it be used as a peptide? And the answer is maybe. But all of that development takes time. Drug development includes multiple phases of human clinical trials because we have to establish safety, we have to establish effectiveness, and remember, it's currently in preclinical phases, animal testing. Human trials would likely start up in the next couple of years. 
So what do we know now? Well, we know that we have seen success in animals, but what we don't know is will it translate to humans? We don't know what the side effects are in a human. We don't know what the potential risks are. Could it improve our bone by 30%, but it causes cancer, like was concerned with some of the anabolic drugs. So there's still a lot to figure out. We don't understand yet how this will fit into the current drug protocols. It might be that the drug companies want to continue to push the anti-resorptive drugs, and they actually put this on the shelf. That's happened in the pharmaceutical industry time and time again. So when will we see a drug out of CCN3? Well, the truth is most drugs drugs take on average seven to 10 years once they hit clinical trials. And we're not even there yet. 10 years is a long time from now. Could it be a game changer for the treatment of osteoporosis? Absolutely. But less than 10% of drugs that are where CCN3 is now actually end up making it to market. So let's not get too hopeful here. We know that CCN3 shows great promise for bone health and the early research is really encouraging. But we need human trials to confirm. We need large-scale human trials to look at safety and confirm dosing, and those cost hundreds of millions of dollars to do. So I wouldn't get too excited yet. Let's keep our eye on the ball, and don't wait for the knight in shining armor to show up to save you because no one's coming to save you. This is something that you really have to get active about. You have to create approach about. You can't just wait for the thing to show up that's gonna fix your bones because you've gotta fix your bones and we can help you do that. So remember that osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. If you aren't subscribed to this channel yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps us help others. The more people that subscribe, the more people we can help. If you enjoyed this video, please consider looking at one of these two videos. We've got the three things to do immediately after you're diagnosed with osteoporosis and our 2024 update on the best diet for osteoporosis. I'll see you in the next video.